All right. Happy third Thursday at 630. You know what time it is. Um, it is time for us to get started. So I'm going to call this meeting to order 630. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Can everyone hear me okay? My computer connection is a little weird. I can hear you, Gabby, but I see your video is a little choppy. So Okay. Yeah, I'm going to off of it because I think it's affecting my voice right now. So give me one second. All right, so we're gonna start with Commissioner Ramos. Commissioner Maharaj. Present. Commissioner Hobbs and Cord. Commissioner Foley. Here. Here. Commissioner De Natale. Present. Commissioner Cancino. Present. Commissioner Bowen. Here. Commissioner Bond. Commissioner Boldenweck. Here. Vice Chair Martahe. Here. And Chairperson Campagna. I'm here and uh, Risha came in right as you called her name, so. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Perfect, Thank you. Thank you. Got it. All right. Um, so moving on, item number three, agenda review. Um, we'll do pretty typical meeting this, this month. Um, we'll go through our approval of the minutes. We have some citizen participation to get through. Um, we'll talk about unfinished business. We have a few items in new business. Uh, we'll do subcommittees and uh, there's quite a bit to share because I know there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, items from commission, we have one listed item from staff and then correspondence and adjournment from there. So um, speaking of approval of the minutes, hopefully everybody had a chance to read through um, our packet from last month. Are there any changes or um, revisions that need to be made for minutes from last month? All right. Um, I will approve them as they stand. And next on to item number five, we have some citizen participation. Um, so there's time for comments um, for things that are not agendized. Um, any citizen participation? All right, again, not hearing anything there. Um, Number six, we have a presentation of the Jack Drago Cultural Arts uh, Youth Art Scholarship. So we have Celeste and Nadine here. Um, Ursi, can I turn it over to you? Absolutely. Uh, so I want to introduce to the commission uh, the two Jack Drago Cultural Arts Commission Youth Art Scholarship recipients um, who uh, are here today uh, and uh, to receive your um, kudos, I hope, and uh, acknowledgments of their achievement. So I, we, I think we do have a presentation, do we not? A very brief one, um, Angela? Yes, Ursi, who would you like to start with? Uh, can we start with Celeste? Sure. So as Aaron is queuing that up, um, I, I'd like to introduce Celeste uh, and just introduce her by saying that she's taken four semesters of art classes uh, during her high school education. Uh, the focus of her studies were both in multimedia and advanced video arts. She plans to attend San Jose University and major in animation and illustration. And you can see there that uh, her future goal uh, is towards uh, creative collaborations and artistic opportunities that will expand her imagination and creativity. And uh, on this slide, uh, that this one and the following are some of her um, outstanding art pieces that she submitted for consideration along with her application. And 
some beautiful and wonderful work. And Celeste, do you have anything that you would like to comment on briefly? Um, I just want to say, like, it's an honor to be chosen as a recipient of this um, scholarship. And it was when I got it, it was really surprising. And I just want to say thank you. Like, it'll help me a lot. And it encourages me more to pursue art and be excited for the future. So thank you. And Celeste, thank you. I think it, I, I speak for myself and maybe everyone here that uh, we are looking forward to seeing more work from you because it's absolutely stunning. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Celeste. Okay, and the other recipient uh, is Nadine Makabakago. Am I pronouncing that probably slash, <laughs> just um, not uh, saying it uh, correctly? So you can educate me, <laughs> Nadine, uh, 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 in just a moment. Um, Nadine uh, also participated uh, besides her high school studies in a San Francisco based summer arts program titled Problem Children Art Extensive. Her work was exhibited at the June. 2021 Problem Library Exhibition. She will attend the prestigious Rhode Island School of Design uh, uh, to further her studies in the arts. And you can see that her future goal is to encourage more Asian representation within design and to use her talents to inspire other girls like herself. And also on these slides, a couple of um, illustrations of, uh, or images of her work. And so Nadine, uh, I invite you to say a few words if you have any, and again, apologies for <laughs> probably messing up your name. It's okay, it's um, pronounced Macapagal, but it's okay. Thank um, you. <laughs> I'd like, also like to say thank you for choosing me as a recipient. Um, this will also help me further motivate me in my um, education with design and art. And I'm very glad that I got chosen and I'm gonna use this money wisely. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Um, uh, the subcommittee chair for youth art uh, scholarship will have more comment on this later on, but ladies, you are free to stay as long as you wish uh, and watch the rest of the meeting or leave at any time you'd like. Um, I will be in further communication with you related to next week's presentation with city council, as well as the uh, extended exhibit. We'll follow up with more detail on that um, in a future email. Thank you for attending. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate both of you. I love what you stand for. And I knew that we made the right choice because you both had other accolades in your, um, your ceremony. Um, so that was really cool. So thank you for uh, being awesome. Um, gonna move us on to our next topic. So we have um, unfinished business. There's nothing listed on the agenda. Um, is there anything from the commission or staff um, that has been added here? All right, we're moving on through. Uh, new business, so we have two um, two items here. So we have cancellation of summer meeting and then general plan updates. So Aaron, uh, passing it to you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, this item is just, so each year, um, the Cultural Arts Commission and the Parks and Recreation Commission are given the option to cancel two of their regularly scheduled meetings in the calendar year. Traditionally, the cancellations have been scheduled in December um, during the holiday season, as well as um, over, one over um, the summer months, allowing some commissioners or most commissioners to take time off for personal activities without being um, counted as a, a missed meeting or an absence at a meeting. Uh, during a month where there is a canceled meeting, um, just a note for all of you, um, to remember that staff continue working on commission items and subcommittees can still convene if desired. Um, 
So kind of what we're looking at um, for you guys to have a conversation on are if you're interested and in, um, what those possible cancellation, what date that might be for um, the summer months. If you guys are having a conversation about that, we'd be looking at either June 16th, July 21st, or August 18th. Those are your three upcoming commission meetings. Um, so we can kind of open the, the floor to you all to have a conversation. Um, if you wanted to and which date that might be. Um, we can help if you have specific questions, but really we're just here to support whatever decision you guys um, come up with. Uh, the August one, it happens after our barbecue event, right? Or before? Before. before. Uh, okay. Um, I would, I don't know guys, what do you think? Do we want to take some time off to get ready for that event? Or we want to um, take one. Just speaking for myself, I, I'm not going to be able to make the July meeting regardless. So if if I had a vote, it would be for July. I'll vote for the open just because <laughs> it's too close and I would like to get to be there just to be able to get ready. I'll vote for the August one. Why are we canceling the meeting again? I'm sorry. We don't have to. It's just an option. Um, I think in the recent years, we haven't been canceling maybe a December one, but um, it's just an option. Like Aaron said, like if we want to travel or um, basically have an excused absence, we can cancel a meeting, but it, it's not a requirement. I can see the logic of Millie's um, suggestion of canceling the, the August one um, since we're all expected, if at all possible, to help out on the barbecue or picnic or whatever we wind up doing. Um, so I, I can see the logic there, um, but I'm also fine not canceling. I'm not sure if I can make every single one in, in the summer, but um, we'll certainly try. I uh, I would like the July date, but it really, yeah, doesn't matter to me. I'll go or not go, that's fine. But if, if I had a choice, it would be July. Yeah, my, my choice would also be July. I think just hearing, not to interrupt, but the, hearing several July dates, that might be another approach the commission wants to take if like, you know, Five of you already know you're going to miss the July meeting for sure. Um, the quorum, we would want to take into consideration quorum for any meeting. Good. That's a good argument, too. <laughs> oh, basically, three more eyes for July get, gets the vote. <laughs> okay, that's my birthday. So I'm just going to say I for July. Happy <laughs> Self it. <laughs> I'll say I for July as well. All right. Oh, what the heck? Fine. Throw me in July, too. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if we need a technical vote, but it sounds like we're not meeting in July. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, do we want to go ahead and do, um, Gabby, are you, yeah, do we want to go ahead and just do a vote? Um, I think, Brian, kind of what we're looking for is that you guys want to cancel and then which date and then we can take a vote on that. Does that work? Fine with me. All right, okay. Um, I move to cancel our July meeting. <laughs> can I get a second? A second. 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 Okay, can we do a roll call vote please? Yes, okay. We're gonna start with. Commissioner Ramos. Commissioner Maharaj. I'm in favor. Commissioner Hobbs and Cord. In favor. Commissioner Foley. Yes. Commissioner De Natale. Uh, yes. Commissioner Cancino. Yes. Commissioner Bowen. Yes. Commissioner Bond. Abstain. 
Commissioner Boldenweck? Yes. Vice Chair Mardahe? Yes. And Chair Campania? Yes. So we are taking Michael's birthday off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Michael, uh, be a party, Michael. <laughs> a birthday bash for you in July instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, passing it now to Angela to give a general plan update. Yes. So, um, unfortunately, Billy Gross, who some of you know through your work uh, on strategic vision, and I think he's been here before, it was unable to come to this meeting, but we thought it was timely to bring the general plan back to all of your attention because of where the city is at in the general plan process. So um, just as background for all of you, a general plan is the local government's blueprint for the community's vision of future growth. Um, this plan is intended to see us through for the next 20 years until 2040 and each city in California must prepare a general plan um, as part of its long-term planning and development process. Uh, we're fortunate that the city has embarked on this effort um, because it is funding our public art master plan process as well. Um, and it's been going on since the general plan process itself has been going on since early 2019. And I think, um, different ones of you might have participated in the various planning processes we've had since then. Unfortunately, you know, it started, COVID was kind of interrupted some of the outreach efforts um, and they were turned to remote sessions. Um, but I think we're back to doing some in-person events again. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have much background information to share with you about, you know, the different aspects of the plan, but I did want to share the website with you in case you haven't reviewed it yet, because it is pretty amazing. Um, the prior version of the city's general plan was just a document that, uh, you know, you would have to read through in order to find chapters that were relevant to you, and it still will be. You can download the current draft of the general plan in its book form um, from the Shape SSF website, which is uh, shapessf.com. So you can download it here. Um, they also have the executive summary available in different languages. Uh, but what I like as a staff person who will be using the general plan to guide future policy for the Park and Rec Department and our programs is that it's more interactive. So um, if you go through the menu options at the top here, under the about section, you can view the history of the outreach process to develop the plan to date. And then if you go to the plan sections, this is where it basically mimics the printed version of the plan, but it's segmented into its different chapters here. So just as an example, I am going to jump to our place, our place chapter and go to abundant and accessible parks and recreation. And so this is the web version of what you would find in the printed plan. And it just talks to you starting with a very high level, you know, what is this? What is the intent behind this section about parks and recreation? Um, what are some of the performance metrics related to this section? So it talks about park service ratios and park access. You know, what are our target goals for measuring this metric? And then information showing the target, which is this lighter yellow compared to the 2021 data to date. So it shows how the city is measuring up to its intended goals um, according to the general plan. And then as you scroll down, how our plan gets us there, this gets into um, the different high level goals within this section of the plan.
And then within each goal, there are some um, policy guidance as well as action items for each of those policies. So that's one area that you could look at. Um, what I like even more is just the explore by topic feature. So for example, if you were interested in arts and culture as the commission may be, um, it basically pulls out all of the goals through all of the sections of the general plan and you know, um, summarizes them for you, puts them at the forefront for you to read through here. So I think I pulled two out. One example would be goal LU8. So this is in the land use and community design chapter. Goal LU8 is a network of attractive pedestrian oriented human scale and well landscaped streets and civic spaces throughout the city for all ages and abilities. Goes on to explain the intent behind the goal and then some of the policy recommendations in order to achieve that goal, as well as the action items. Um, so I think um, as it relates to the Cultural Arts Commission, we will definitely be sharing it with our public art master plan consultants. And the intent behind um, this is this is you know, a basis to guide our public art master plan and linking the goals of citywide initiatives with what's going to be identified in the public art master plan. And then finally, I wanted to make sure, oh, there's the measuring progress section, which just brings all of the metrics to the forefront. If you were just interested in metrics, according to topic here. Um, and then the one I wanted to share is the plan feedback section. So um, this is being shared publicly now and through various outreach events in, that have happened in person and virtually, but you can also share your feedback online. And if you go to the um, feedback section, there are some videos about how you can leave a comment on the general plan. And then um, if you scroll further down, this is basically um, as if you were in person, you can put sticky notes on the plan and you can also view what other people have commented on for certain sections. Um, so, you know, all the different parts are laid out here and you have the option to leave your comments. Uh, one event that I wanted to highlight that might be of interest to you is this Saturday, May 21st, there is going to be an event that uh, the flyer has also been attached in your correspondence and your packet. It's a down, it's taking place downtown, the Pine Green lot at 700 Linden Avenue from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, they're providing food and child care services. This reminds me that I did get to meet Risha at, um, which event was that? I'm not sure I see it on here, but um, anyways, that was a great event. They did have free food for everyone and it was a good opportunity for outreach about the plan. Does anyone have any questions? I just want to comment that that website's pretty impressive. That's cool to see all of the aspirations for Parks and Rec. All right, well, I guess I'm done if there are no comments or questions. Cool, thank you. Yeah, Parks and Rec killing it as always. Um, Okay, we are going to move on to our updates from subcommittees. First up, we have a status update from Strategic Vision. Okay, and actually this month, um, the update is light again as we're uh, anticipating the public art plan consultants coming on board. So we shifted focus toward brainstorming ideas for the fundraising. Um, event in August. So we shared those ideas with the uh, Youth Art Subcommittee who's heading that up. And um, 
yeah, that's our update. Awesome. Thank you. A, a nimble group. Um, <laughs> next up is sculpture. Any status update there? Uh, nothing at the present. We're meeting uh, hopefully next month to bring some things up to date and to your attention. I, um, I have some questions about some of our uh, art pieces. Would you like me to keep that till later on with um, under the heading of um, items from commissioners? Um, I mean, you have the mic now, so you can. Okay. Um, I want to bring to our attention that I have, we have not heard anything about windswept in months. And I know that the artist is out of town, his mentor isn't available, but I would like to see that piece back in some space. Uh, the second one was, I think we should have some word from Greg about the outcome um, of his visit to see those John Pugh pieces in that uh, breezeway in uh, downtown area. And the third one, I heard recently that um, the eternal flame piece is um, in the area where the swimming pool is and might be moved. I also, in doing that, um, went through all the things that are online about public pieces. And one of the things I noticed is I think maybe the third, if you just look up the eternal flame and the third item that comes up looks like something that the city has done. It doesn't say so, but it looks like it. Um, and it describes all the things we have. And it says that that piece was dedicated to John Kennedy. And I don't believe that's correct. I, I think that um, it says it was dedicated to all veterans and I don't think that was ever changed. So I'd like to point out that since that is one of our pieces, we should have correct information about it. So I'd like to have somebody check on that, Ursi. Uh, yeah, we can check on that. Uh, information on the flame came from various sources. So uh, I, I can check with you, Lynn, to find out exactly where it is you saw that about the John Kennedy. I haven't seen it, but yeah, we'll, it's we'll look on into here. it. Um, the, the piece, I, I can't find anybody that even knows anything. <laughs> Whenever I want to know anything about the old days, I always call Mary Juicy, who knows everything. Um, and Mary says she doesn't know anything about the person who uh, created it, except that it was a high school kid at the in 1967, I think, who won a contest with his design for the Eternal Flame. So the Eternal Flame doesn't necessarily mean John F. Kennedy. And so all in all, I think we, we should at least be sure that the correct information is out there. And what's up with that piece? And if I could just chime in as well. Um, so that's similar to what I've heard recently is that it was created in reaction to John F. Kennedy's passing and then was part of the Veterans Memorial, which was out there with the flags. Um, so I guess if we can find that out from the city sooner than later, that is really the topic of the our discussion in the subcommittee meeting in these coming weeks um, as we determine the historical significance of this before um, bringing that back to the commission. Yes, we, we will definitely get back to you on that one. And um, Lynn, I can also speak on your other two items too, briefly. So actually just the last two days, we've 
picked up correspondence again with um, uh, Michael Bondi, who um, was recommended by the artist for Windswept. So we're hoping to get a contract in place um, with him for repairs on that one. Um, and then as for um, the um, doors of, now I'm blanking, the doors of Ave Avignon down at the Breezeway on Grand Avenue. Um, some of us actually took a field trip out there and looked at them ourselves too. Um, so it does look like they will have to come down. Um, there's still a little bit of process involved before they fully come down and uh, working, reaching out to the artist and um, working, you know, with the downtown um, property owners too. So there's a few more steps in there, but it does look like they, they will not blast up there. So more to come are on they, that. Have any, are they any, in any condition to be fixed or to be resurfaced? So I believe first we'll reach out to the artist and, and see, you know, what, what they want to do with it. Um, as they are right now, they're, they're kind of falling apart. They're not in very good shape at all. Um, so I don't know how much hope there is for that, but, um, like I said, we'll reach out to the artists first and see, um, but as they look, they, I think right now they're just going to need to come down, unfortunately. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Lynn, I have um, something that's just reminded me of, which is we may have the opportunity to acquire for the city a sculpture. It was a sculpture that was at Burning Man. Um, I haven't seen it myself, but apparently it's quite large and could be something that's kind of neat. Um, one of my small industrial neighbors mentioned that he has it in one of his warehouses. Um, if we're interested in looking into that, I could reach out to him and maybe somebody from, or more than one person from the um, uh, sculpture subcommittee could come take a look and see if you're interested. My understanding is, especially if the city were willing to display it, that and, and felt like it was worthy of display that it would be great. You guys there? Yeah, nice. That's cool. Lynn looks frozen in shock. Oh. <laughs> um, Lynn, are you the? I'm, I'm hearing. Gonna... I'm I'm having a terrible time hearing her. I'm going to step in and say yes, as a representative of that committee, not the chair, but as a representative of that committee, we are definitely interested in checking that out and okay. exploring that further. Cool. Um, well, Great. then I will leave in your hands to reach out to me and I'll connect you with my neighbor and um, you guys can come check it out. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. Thank you, Sculpture. Um, now looking to urban art for a status update. Perfect. Sort of back to me and then back to my goal. So um, two things. One is um, I was hoping that the urban art committee subcommittee could please stay on for like a minute, two minutes um, after the um, general meeting tonight, um, just for logistics. And then um, we have an interim update about the mural in uh, Loma Alta. Michael, if you'd like to go ahead. Yeah, so um, in speaking with uh, one or two of the other commissioners, I realized that we hadn't received an update um, on the Altaloma Park mural in a while. So um, it is in progress. This is a presentation that I just quickly put together with snapshots that were on my camera. So I dumped them in um, page by page, we'll go through. So this is the front-facing side as you drive up from McClellan Drive that you see um, in the park. And so this just shows the different type facing that we explored um, and the process of using the vinyl um, stickering to mask the lettering for Alta Loma Park. Then students outlined that, filled it in, or X, sorry, outlined that, peeled it off, then filled it in. Um, today, it doesn't look like that. It's gone one step further and has a background of white um, border on that, but we will, or I will uh, make sure that we have the finished pictures um, 
in an upcoming meeting so that we get to share the final product. So again, these are just in progress photos. Um, if you wanna advance the slide. And this is the other half of that wall. So to the right of those letters is a pattern um, that we used a chalking um, technique to make sure that those lines were straight. So um, then went and filled in color. So um, we can continue, I guess, to the next slide. And you'll see that wow. the pattern continues. So it starts to layer. And again, I mean, I feel like I'm showing you such a work in progress. It doesn't look like this today. It looks, you know, so if you get a chance to go out there, it looks even better than the photos that you see. Um, and uh, this is the wall that faces uh, Alta Loma Middle School. So this artist, again, is Jay. He went to Alta Loma Middle School. Um, he is a Korean American immigrant. And um, a lot of that and his story is uh, depicted in these um, drawings of his. So this was exciting. And I have to say, as kids and community members are walking around this, it's already just lights them up and they've expressed how much they enjoy seeing this, seeing the process, but are eager to see the finished product as well. So it's been fun. Um, then this, um, the wall where the snack shack is, um, is a little further behind in process, um, but you'll see Alejandro there doodling for um, a young girl who uh, was watching him. And then of course that, those doodles got painted over, but it was a lot of fun. And um, then we have uh, Wendy down in the bottom, um, having painted the pattern on the walls of the bathroom. So, um, so that's where it is or was maybe two weeks ago. Um, and Easy. as we have more pictures to share, I guess in the next meeting, we'll probably have a close to finished mural to see. Really cool to see it in progress. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Awesome. Just a general appreciation for this group. We're doing some cool art in South City, um, bringing a lot of cool things and like, feels like we're on a roll. So it's so cool to see. Thank you. Um, appreciate the update. Next is our youth art program. So um, I will speak. Um, I've been speaking a lot today. So I'm going to do the scholarship and then I'm going to pass to Sarah, I think, for the other two. So um, Jack Drago scholarship. Obviously, we all saw our two recipients were here this evening. Um, I had the opportunity to present to them at El Camino High School's um, scholarship award ceremony. I don't know the technical name, but it was so cool. They both got um, additional awards in addition to ours. And I know um, in the past we have felt like maybe our scholarships don't stack up, but um, I think that we really represented uh, this year at this show and uh, we were able to give out you know money that will help the students and they both said it this evening. So it was, um, it was really great to see. Um, looking forward, they have the opportunity to um, be presented their scholarships at the city council meeting that's happening next Wednesday, the 25th at 6 p.m. Um, I believe they are both attending in person. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll have somebody to represent. I am not able to make that meeting, but um, I think we're looking for somebody else that can go. Um, so that's a really cool thing. Um, thank you everybody for your input and for helping along with that process. And now I'm gonna pass it to Sarah. Sorry, Ryan, could you please repeat what day it was, the city council? Yeah, it's next Wednesday, May 25th. Oh, okay. And because it is yeah, at, right. yeah, 6 p.m. Yes. You got it. And Sarah, passing to you. Thanks, Ryan. I think RC has a comment. Yeah, if if it's possible, Ryan, uh, can we uh, confirm a, a volunteer to attend that meeting tonight? Yeah, um, so I guess, Sarah, I'll look to you because I think it was offered to you and I first. So if you're unavailable um, to make it, then we can open up to the larger group. But I want to give you that chance before we open it to everybody else. Okay, 
Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, I actually just checked my calendar right now and I, I at six o'clock, I just won't, yeah, I unfortunately won't be able to make it. No worries. Um, so is there anybody on, from our commission that can make a six o'clock uh, meeting next Wednesday? It would be great to have some representation to, uh, you know, show up to city council and represent the work that we're doing. Um, if I can, if I can add also, uh, you, you need not stay for the whole meeting. Um, it would involve um, just presenting yourself and the scholarship um, information or the, the history of it. And I would send you a few bullet, bullet points that you can read um, and then presenting the uh, honorees. Um, uh, and it takes place at the council chambers uh, as usual. These are hybrid meetings now. Um, so it, it's a wonderful way for the community to see their cultural arts commission and, and as Ryan said, the work they do. And Ursi, is do we also have the option to join virtually instead of in person as commissioners? You may. I, I'm. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure how that all would occur. Um, Angela, perhaps can yeah. you comment? I don't even know how that would work uh, in a hybrid uh, way with live bodies. Yeah. There. I mean, I think. I think we can make it work. It helps to know, you know, if the students are coming in person or hybrid, because you know we would want someone to receive them. In which case. Ursi, I think you were planning to be here anyway, and I can also back you up if for some reason that doesn't work out. I mean, it is nice to connect in person, um, but you know, I also understand that this is an earlier meeting time than it has been in the past, so it could be hard for people. Um, I also wanna note that Millie had to leave the meeting early and uh, Raul also is not here. We can, we can try to ask them um, to see if they're available and then put another plea out to all of you if, you know, just as a, a kind of last effort to see if there is any commissioners who can represent either in person or virtually. Um, at, um, I can actually um, attend it in person. I probably can't stay like the whole meeting. I'll probably just be able to do that and then, and then, and then bounce. Um, but I've never represented um, the Cultural Arts Commission before at, at a city council. So if there's any, but any other veterans that want to do it, by all means, please. Um, but if there's nobody that can commit to that tonight, then, then it's something that I could do. And this is Crystal, by the way. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, I can, I can certainly send you the information. Um, I guess I can add to that also that any commissioners that want to come in and just uh, view the, the uh, meeting, they can do that too. Uh, generally pre-pandemic, uh, this invitation was put out for commissioners to attend and the presentation of, of the artists or any commission related uh, uh, honor that was gonna be happening at a city council meeting. Um, and, uh, and sometimes there, a couple of commissioners did come by uh, as well as the one commissioner or two commissioners that present the honorees. So um, we're kind of in a crazy transition time. And, uh, um, but I wanted to put that out for you uh, as far as now that we're hopefully heading towards a, a little bit more normal uh, and more live in-person um, experience. Thank you, Crystal. Um, you got this. Ursi gives great notes. Um, you'll have, you'll be plenty prepared. So I appreciate you stepping up. Um, and then uh, Sarah, back to you for some updates. Thanks, Ryan. And, and yes, thank you, Crystal. Um, so uh, for my report, I just wanted to share some highlights on the recent April um, Youth Art Show. Um, because it was very exciting to get back to a live art gallery exhibit. It's been over two years since we've been able to do that. So it was very exciting. Um, and uh, the theme, as you all know, was National Diversity Month, um, which is observed in the month of April. Um, and, and I, again, just wanna share a, a quick few highlights from the exhibit. So there were 24 entries um, by 
South City Unified School District students. There were 19 group entries that reflected the work of, of hundreds of kids participating um, in the South City Parks and Rec childcare programs. Um, and Friday's art gallery opening um, had also featured the announcement of, of South San Francisco's library's first poet in residence honoree, um, Chloe Chow. If you're interested in looking at her poetry, it's still available to view at the Municipal Services display window as part of the Youth Art Show Extended Exhibit. And then I'll, I'll skip down to, um, in terms of, of still accessing the exhibit, if you're interested, there is an extended um, exhibit of selected art that's still on display at the Municipal Service bu Services building as well. And that'll be up through um, Thursday, June 2nd. And then you can also access a virtual exhibit through two galleries, um, which is running through June 5th. And um, I can see, let me see if I can, can I go ahead and drop something in the chat box, um, the links, or see, am I able to do that? Let's see. But yeah, I'll drop them in the chat box here in case anybody um, wants to check them out. Oh, I think that went directly to Angela. Okay. I can share. Thanks, Angela. <laughs> um, Okay, so wrapping that up, um, I wanted to, so the report that I wanted to give um, was with respect to the youth art show for, for next year. Um, although I haven't been a part of uh, the prior art shows before COVID, I've heard that they are wonderful. And um, for 19 years before the pandemic, uh, the youth art show was a partnership between this commission and um, the South San Francisco Unified School District. Um, and, you know, from what I hear from Ersi, it was a huge production and there was all kinds of um, different types of art that, that was included, including, you know, performing youth arts demonstrations and craft activities and um, everything else. So at this point, the school district liaison is now um, interested in resuming that partnership for 2023 um, and would like to go ahead and start scheduling dates in March. So at this point, I'd open it up to, to um, any comments at the commission to see, you know, um, if everyone is is good with us moving forward with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> <right there. laughs> it was awesome. I it was it was huge. It was um, multiple rooms in the atrium in the Betty Weber room, and like you know, it was all of the MSB pretty much filled up with art. Um, there's a notable difference between this year and previous years where we had that partnership. Um, so I'm in favor of it. All right. Anything we can do to support that, um, we definitely should, and I will definitely stand behind as well. So I support that. I do as well. Um, okay, well, I think that wraps up my um, well, I, I'll say one quick note on the barbecue fundraiser. It's well underway. We are hard at work trying to pull the pieces together. There's a lot of moving parts, um, but hope to uh, um, give a more detailed report at the next meeting. Well, cool. Thank you so much. Um, next up is our 2D arts and crafts show for July 15th and 16th. Clarify, and I actually just clarified this on the sheet that I sent over to Ursi. Um, the intention was to just be, in general, handcrafted arts, not necessarily just 2D. So hopefully we can still adjust that. Um, and the um, checklist has been filled out, <laughs> um, finally. And um, Ursi, you should have that in your inbox. I got it, Risha, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, with that information, I'll be pulling guidelines together uh, and um, have that available uh, before we, as, as the month turns, <laughs> so. Oh. oh, thank you so much. Um, performing arts. I don't have anything new at this time, no new updates. Got it, thank you. And then community, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, through the chair, um, Ryan, just one more thing related to the July art show, and that is the docent list. Uh, 
We have July off now, but please a reminder that we will need your help uh, uh, in far as hosting this event and, uh, and uh, getting art and installing art. And we do have a, a list. Uh, I don't know if it's available to show right now, but in the upcoming weeks uh, uh, or week, I will be sending you the link uh, to, to sign up for a spot uh, to help out. The event is uh, July 4, 15 and 16th, but uh, the preparation starts on Tuesday the 12th, receiving art Wednesday the 9th, installing the art, and in this case, the commission is in, in, in um, task is to put up the art uh, and then uh, the host the show opening and, uh, uh, and uh, return of art. So um, this is kind of, this is just a draft at this juncture, but we will have a link available for you to sign up. So please uh, look at your calendars and kind of reserve uh, those dates uh, because um, we need your help for that. Absolutely. Awesome. We will look forward to that. Um, thank you for the dates in advance. Um, we am hopeful that people can help out. You know, we have plenty of time. Um, we have a few months before this. So um, if you don't have anything existing, please save some of these times. Um, uh, it's really good that this is going out now because I literally already have work travel plans and so I, i'm pretty sure i'm not going to make it back by the 15th but i should be able to participate the week before hopefully knock on wood and the uh, saturday july 16th so um but yeah let's get this out as soon as possible please awesome yeah i'm agree okay um community engagement so millie uh, had to drop off the call so i'm gonna deliver the update um so there was a subcommittee meeting, um, the first one in a while. I know that there was some things that the subcommittee was working on in uh, creating a list and like reaching out to the community. Um, there was some partnership between the youth art subcommittee and the community engagement subcommittee. So at this point, the major update is that the community engagement subcommittee is handling um, the donations and solicitations for the fundraiser. Um, so Millie is taking lead on that and um, will be recruiting some help for from the rest of the subcommittee. Um, other than that, brainstorming um, and kind of, you know, talking as a group and how we see ourselves as, uh, you know, being effective in, in this space. Um, and that wraps up our subcommittee updates. Um, item number 10, do we have any items from commission? Uh, my band, Love Strike, will be playing at the San Mateo County Fair on Sunday, June 12th at 1 p.m. So hopefully you guys can come out. And then on uh, June 18th, which is a Saturday night at 8 p.m., we'll be playing at Fort McKinley in South San Francisco, which is right across the street from um, Seeds Candies. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Crystal, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Chris. Or thanks, Ryan. Um, so I, I do have an announcement. I know it's been kind of short and sweet, and I came on during the commission. Um, but June or our meeting in June will be my last meeting with the Culture Arts Commission. Uh -huh. Um, I'll 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 be going on to um a, a, a different commission, the Equity and Public Safety Commission. Um, so I'll still be in touch with South San Francisco, and and again, like. If you guys need help with anything, Paula, Claudia, and I know we have like the tech stuff. I'll totally still help you out. So okay, don't even worry great. about that. Yeah, 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 definitely reach out or if you guys need anything or, um, and I really wholeheartedly mean that if you guys need anything, I would love to help in any way. So um, I definitely want to stay connected as, as much as I can. So I really appreciate like everybody just, um, you know, being so kind and, and all the hard work that you guys are doing and the effort, especially during during the pandemic. Um, kind of sad to leave because I feel like I haven't got my footing in the door yet with the commission, but um, it's been it's been a total blast. And again, I'm I'm still I'm a South San Francisco resident, so I'll be around and I'll help out as much as I as I can. And I really, really wholeheartedly mean that. So that's about it. Thank you, Crystal. Thanks for your service to helping us out. Uh, good luck in what you got coming. Appreciate you.
Any other items from commission? All right, moving on, we have items from staff. There is one uh, item listed, it's upcoming events. I can take this one. Um, if any of you are interested on Monday, May 30th, we are going to be, the city is hosting its annual um, Memorial Day flag ceremony, which takes place um, at the Eternal Flame sculpture at Orange Memorial Park. There was a breakfast associated with this event, but that's since been canceled because of the rising COVID rates. Mm. They still intend to have the ceremony itself and that is scheduled to start at 10 o'clock. So that, again, that's at the um, Eternal Flame sculpture at Orange Memorial Park. And again, Angela, what's the date? May 30th. May 30th. And then as far as summer events go, I was thinking that as you all were talking about um, canceling the July meeting, I remembered that we all, this time last year, we had our Park and Rec Month Field Day event in which I got to meet Zubin in person for the first time and Michael was there and we got to see Lynn again and it was really wonderful. So um, for whatever it's worth, maybe we can do that again. I, we still have some details to organize for that event itself. Um, it's going to be on July. Can't be there. <laughs> July 15. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> you all will be gathering anyway at your art show. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyways, our movie night is, is that evening, if anyone were interested in coming, um, July 15th. And the movie typically begins at sundown. Around That's the same day as the field day thing, Angela? Yes, it is. It is the 15th. So that's it for me. All right. Thanks. Is it May 15th? Can we just put a note out there to maybe, um, maybe if there'd be a connection to help uh, promote our arts show um, that evening? A um, little bit of outreach, cross promotion at the- Definitely, that. yes. Awesome. Thanks, sorry to jump in like that. Thank you. All good, good idea. Um, okay, so our correspondence were sent out. Um, Gabby sent those out so you can find them in your email. And that is going to bring our meeting to an end. So I am going to adjourn at 728. And I know Risha wanted the um, Urban Art Subcommittee to stay on. So if those represented in there can stay on for some logistics talk. Um, that's it. You're free to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for thank the you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.